Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the eighth video of 10th grade biology, a series of video lectures prepared by the faculty of DPS. So continuing with the 12th chapter, coordination and control. In the previous video, we tried to understand how different organs of human body work together in coordination, perform their respective duties, support each other and facilitate each other. We now know that two types of coordination systems exist in our body. One is nervous coordination and second is chemical coordination. In this video, we will learn some basic points of human nervous system. The nervous system in man and in other higher animals is made up of two major components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system comprises of coordinators that is brain and spinal cord while peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves that arise from central nervous system and spread in different parts of the body. This nomenclature is based on the actual position of these two systems. Brain and spinal cord enjoy the central position actually lying in the center. Peripheral nervous system lies in the periphery around the central nervous system as you can see over here both brain and spinal cord are in the central axis while these blue arrows show peripheral nervous system branching out of the central nervous system all these components are made up of neurons which is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system nerve cell or neuron is the unit of nervous system the human nervous system consists of billions of neurons plus supporting neuroglial cells. A neuron is a cell very much different from a typical cell which you have been studying in your previous classes. It is a specialized cell modified to conduct nerve impulses from receptors to coordinators and from coordinators to effectors. In this way, they communicate with each other and with other types of body cells. A neuron has falling parts, maybe cell body, axons, dendrons, myelin sheath, etc. Neurons never divide, but broken nerve cells can be regenerated by special proteins called nerve growth factor proteins. Let's have a look at the structure of a neuron. The main portion of a neuron is soma or simply the cell body, which has a nucleus and cytoplasm just like any typical cell. Many cytoplasmic extensions arise from the cell body and these extensions are of two types. Those which carry impulses towards the cell body are known as dendrons or dendrites while those which carry impulses away from the cell body are known as exons. The terminal points of exons are called the nerve endings. Different neurons lie end to end to form a network and nerve endings of one neuron synapse with the branches of other neurons. It means that the terminal points of two neurons do not join but they have a tiny gap between them and this gap is called a synapse. Schwann cells are a type of glial cells or the supporting cells that help to form a fatty layer known as myelin sheath around the axons. This myelin sheath is not continuous and there are gaps between the Schwann cells. These points or the non-myelinated parts are known as the nodes of Renvier. The nodes of Renvier ensure speedy transmission of impulse through a nerve fiber because the nerve impulse jumps from node to node through a myelinated axon. This jumping speeds up the arrival of impulse at the terminal as compared to the continuous flow which is slower along a non-myelinated nerve fiber. This type of conduction from node to node is called saltatory conduction or simply saltatory impulse. This animation may help you understand how a nerve impulse travels along neurons. A nerve impulse is a wave of electrochemical changes that travel along the length of neurons. This is how nerve cells communicate with each other. 
A nerve impulse is generated when a neuron's membrane potential is changed by chemical signals from a nearby cell. Do you remember membrane potential? No? Recall the concept of sodium potassium pump across a cell membrane from your ninth class biology. Got it? So when a neuron is excited, sodium ions flow into the cell while potassium ions flow out of the cell. Membrane potential changes from negative to positive and this change passes on all along the neuron from neuron to neuron. Here you can see different nerve impulses passing across synapse between many neurons together in central nervous system. After we have understood the structure of a typical neuron, let's have a look on its different types. There are three types of neurons. This is a motor neuron, the second one a relay neuron, and the third one is known as a sensory neuron. These are classified on the basis of transmission of impulse, in which direction impulse is transferred. Sensory neurons carry impulses from receptors to the central nervous system, and that's why they are also known as receptor neurons. Motor neurons carry impulses from central nervous system to the effectors, while relay or interneurons make up the central nervous system. After understanding the structure of a typical neuron and then its types and understanding that it is the basic unit of nervous system, let's try to understand what central nervous system is. The central nervous system or CNS has two parts, brain and spinal cord. And both of these act as coordinators and are made up of hundreds of relay neurons. So let's study them one by one. First discuss the brain. Brain is situated inside the bony cranium which is part of the skull. Actually skull includes both facial bones and cranium. Inside the cranium brain is covered by three membranes called meninges. These meninges protect brain and also provide nutrients and oxygen to the brain tissues through the blood capillaries which are present in them. As you can see over here in this picture, this is actually the real brain of uh, a human being. The brain contains fluid filled ventricles that are continuous with the central canal of the spinal cord and the fluid within these ventricles and central canal is known as cerebrospinal fluid. The name is very easy to understand. Cerebrospinal fluid, cerebro related to the cerebrum part of the brain, spinal related to spinal. So it is the cerebrospinal fluid. For the sake of understanding, brain is divided into three major regions, which are forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain is divided into three parts, cerebrum, thalamus, and hypothalamus. Cerebrum is the largest part of forebrain. It controls skeletal muscles and all the conscious activities like thinking, intelligence, emotions, etc. It is divided into two cerebral hemispheres. An upper layer of cerebral hemisphere is cerebral cortex which is made up of gray matter which is composed of the cell bodies and non-myelinated axons. Beneath the gray matter lies the white matter which consists of the myelinated nerve fibers. The anterior part of cerebral hemispheres are called olfactory bulbs which receive impulses from olfactory nerves in the nose and create the sensation of smell. Cerebral cortex has a large surface area and is folded in order to fit into the skull. It is divided into four lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal and occipital and we will discuss them later. Thalamus lies just below the cerebrum. It serves as a relay center between various parts of brain and spinal cord. It also receives and modifies sensory impulses before they travel to cerebrum. Thalamus is also involved in pain perception and consciousness like sleep and awakening. Next to thalamus lies hypothalamus. Hypothalamus lies above the midbrain and just below the thalamus. 
in humans it is roughly the size of an almond and the most important function it performs is that it links nervous system with endocrine system it controls the secretions of pituitary gland which is the master endocrine gland it also controls feelings such as rage pain pleasure and sorrow another important part is hippocampus this hippocampus is involved in long term memory feelings and reactions if hippocampus is damaged it will result in loss of new memories that means old memories persist but new memories are not recorded as we discussed earlier that cerebral cortex has a large surface area and is divided into four lobes each lobe controlling different functions of the body so these are the four lobes frontal parietal temporal and occipital you can uh, learn it making an abbreviation as fpto frontal lobe it controls motor functions permits conscious control of skeletal muscles and coordinates movements involved in the speech parietal lobe contains sensory areas that receive impulses from skin occipital region receives and analyzes visual information while temporal lobe is concerned with hearing and smell next comes the midbrain Midbrain is the smallest region of the brain and is located most centrally within the cranial cavity. The midbrain serves important functions in motor movement, particularly movements of the eye and in auditory and visual processing. Next to it lies the brain stem. Midbrain along with pons and medulla makes up the brain stem. Brain stem controls the flow of messages between the brain and rest of the body it controls the basic body functions such as breathing swallowing heart rate blood pressure consciousness whether one is awake or not last part of brain is hind brain hind brain also consists of three parts medulla oblongata this one cerebellum over here and pons Medulla oblongata lies on top of the spinal cord and it is part of the brain stem which we discussed previously it controls breathing heart rate blood pressure all these things are involuntary so it is concerned with involuntary actions it also controls many reflexes such as vomiting coughing sneezing information that passes between spinal cord and rest of the brain passes through this medulla oblongata Then comes the cerebellum which is behind medulla and it coordinates muscle movements. Pons also part of brain stem is present on top of medulla and it assists medulla in controlling breathing. It also serves as a connection between cerebellum and spinal cord. Central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord we know it. We have studied brain and next is the spinal cord. Spinal cord is in fact a tubular bundle of nerves it starts from brain stem and extends to the lower back like brain spinal cord is also covered by meninges the vertebral column surrounds and protects the spinal cord as brain and spinal cord are the coordinators so they are protected by bony coverings brain is protected by skull and spinal cord is protected by a vertebral column The outer region of spinal cord is made of white matter containing myelinated axons. The central region is butterfly shaped gray matter that surrounds the central canal. Spinal cord is the continuation of medulla oblongata. Spinal cord is roughly 40 cm long and is about as wide as your thumb for most of its length. Being part of the central nervous system, spinal cord controls simple reflexes which are involuntary and we will discuss them in the next video. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves that arise along the spinal cord. At the point where a spinal nerve arises from the spinal cord, there are two roots of spinal nerves and both these roots unite to form one mixed nerve. The dorsal root contains sensory axons and a ganglion where cell bodies are located the ventral root contains axons of motor neurons spinal cord performs two main functions first it serves as a link between body parts and brain 
the information they pass through the spinal cord from receptors to brain and instructions from brain to the effectors spinal cord acts itself as a coordinator responsible for simple reflexes which are known as reflex actions let's have a look what you have learned in while watching this video you studied about nervous system central nervous system peripheral nervous system basic structure of nervous system the neuron its structure and its types then the central nervous system brain and spinal cord still you have some questions feel free to ask in the comment section so till the next video good luck and allah hafiz